Hey folks, it's Fridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are just going to sell our very last load of slurry for today. There we go, one more tanker load of political promises. Delivered as promised. And we're going to go into here a second and we're just going to see. So we're getting 69 per thousand litres for slurry. Manure is up to 56, and we're not going to worry, excuse me, we're not going to worry too much about the manure at the moment. I'm just going to get this one unloaded, and then I'm going to drive the tanker away, and we will park this one up, and then we won't worry about it for a day or two. We've got milk waiting, well, it will be sold, 2,078 harvest income right there from that slurry. Okay, that's pretty good. You know what? I'm actually thinking I'm just going to leave this one over here hooked into the slurry tanker. And we're going to keep a half an eye on that slurry because that's the best possible price that we could get. Now, I got silage loaded in here from when we were scraping out the cows yesterday. So I'm going to bring that down this way. And I'm going to tip that out for the cattle over here. Um... I oh, know it's it's the right hand side that we tip out. I keep getting that wrong. Bring that one in around over to here and dump out that silage. There we go. Right, three thousand liters of silage can be chucked into that one there, and then I will swing on round the other side, and we will start it loading up again. I've got nothing else that I need to worry about with the animals for loading or anything like that. So I can just bring you in over to here. We've got 210,000 litres of total mixed ration in there, ready and waiting. And our cattle at the moment, we've got space easily for that. Probably two or three more loads that can go in there if we wanted to put them in there. I'm not going to worry about that. What I'm going to do... Is I'm going to get this one and I'm going to load up this, uh, hitch up this trailer right here. And we're going to take this one down to the sell point. But I'm also going to start uh, ticking forward time fairly rapidly like this. I don't want to put you there. I need to just bring you back a bit like this. There we go, like that. There, right. Hook that one in there. And then... Spin you on round. Oh, nice. We've got a little bit of a steering, a rear steering axle on this one. On the very back axle, there's a little bit of steering assist on that. Which means that we can get round slightly tighter corners. Which is pretty good. I like that. Uh, let's bring you over here. So, it's the prices now that I kind of want to keep an eye on. That one's staying at 69, but the manure is now stopped at 56. I would like the slurry to, like, you know, keep us to keep going. We've got 2,000 there, we've got 15,000 there, so it may be worth us ticking the time forward another few hours and then getting one more load of slurry loaded up and sold. I'll bring this load right here in and we'll sell all of that in a minute. Um, that is a... Oh, it is a tipping trailer. It does tip. You've got to lift up the back first. You lift up the back gate on there. Uh, so we're up to 17,000 there. Well, does that go per tick? 18.4. There is the big mound of manure disappearing off into here. And this isn't like the most important. We've got 2,500 from there. Um, This is just like a little bit of extra income that comes in. It's an extra little bit just to help us out. Uh, honestly, it's, it's not like a, a life-changing thing in any way. So I'm not that concerned about it. If we do have enough to make a load, which we might do. It may get another 10,000 litres in there. Um, and the price is still really good for slurry, then we will do it. But other than that, I'm not too concerned about it. We get two grand for that, so it's really not worth spending lots of time worrying about it. Um, I'm going to take this one on around here. We, I, I, I want to get time, like, we, we need to fast forward all day today, I think, and then uh, the harvest will be ready to start tomorrow. That's what we, that's where we're really going to be making our money. 
Um, well, not our money, but we're, we're going to be sort of stocking up with the pigs and, and all of the food and everything. So that's kind of what we want to focus on. We want to we wanna get that bit done rather than anything else. We're on half past three right now. We've got 23,000 litres there and 4,000 litres there. The price is still good. Manure price is starting to come down, though. So if I want to get any more manure sold today, we, we sort of need to hurry up a little bit. Um, I'll go in here, start loading you up. There we go. That one's that one's gone into there. So that's still on 69. Uh, go here to the cattle. 25,000 there and 5,000 there. Right, I'm going to slow that down to five times speed now. I'll ignore that one a second, and I'm going to go back over to you. And I'm going to drive you. I'm going to take you back to the farm. We were a little bit premature getting rid of you just yet. So we'll take you back round to the farm. And you've got one more collection to do. We'll take a bit from the pigs, whatever we can. And then we will go round and... No, actually, we'll do it the other way. We'll loop round the other way. We'll loop to the farm first. The grain is actually ready to start harvesting. Now at tw a quarter to three. I'm not going to start now, though. I'm going to wait until the morning. We are going to wait for the morning on this one. Because of the amount of time that it will take to do all of the harvest, it sort of, it's going to end up taking too long. And then I'm going to want to be able to uh, get planting underway as well. And sort of get the whole lot going all together. So I'm not going to do it yet. And also, we'll be harvesting at five times speed. We've normally been harvesting at uh, one time speed because we've been also doing mowing. But we're not doing mowing. Right, you're... I need to go into this one. Uh, we're not doing mowing. So because we're not doing mowing, we're not going to have any um, grass. To, like, we're not going to be... We don't have any reason to put it to one time speed until we get to the planting stage. Just doing the harvesting, we have to leave our clock on five times speed. That's the rules of this series. It has to stay on five times speed at all times unless planting or cutting grass. And for the first time, we're not going to be cutting grass at the same time as doing our other harvest. So this is going to make a difference to how things work out. Um, and we do have a couple of other exceptions, like when we get a good price, when we're selling wool and eggs so that we don't have pallets spawning unnecessarily on the spawn point. Just while we're getting things, uh, shifting, taking them around and, and getting rid of them. Uh, little details like that, but for the most part, no, we are sort of, we're sticking with what we, with our five times speed. So, for this harvest, now, we need to stick to five times speed. And we'll have to for the entire harvest. At least until we've reach the planting stage like if, if if we can reach planting then yeah but we're not likely to do that until after we've done all of the harvesting because i'm gonna harvest the corn first i'll be doing some mowing in there and uh, not mowing sorry plowing we'll be starting all of that off but that can all be done at five times speed as well so it's going to be interesting to see how much we can actually do Gonna, it's going to be an interesting little exercise there. Right, are we still... Yes, we are still getting our 69 here. I'm happy with that. That's a good price. And wool price now, has that changed? That's now at rock bottom at 837. Eggs are dropped. Eggs have gone down. So we'll probably do something with those a bit later as well. See the manure here? It, re it, it really doesn't like to load into this one. I mean, this one's absolutely fantastic. And it does do a brilliant job. I was told that this is a very unrealistic machine to use for loading up the manure. And um, for a hardcore realistic series, this is an absolute joke, I think was the phrase. Um, yeah, be careful dealing in absolutes. Anyone and everyone, you should always be careful dealing in absolutes. I have personally seen, in real life, a machine similar to this being used to load manure into a trailer. So, this is one thing I have seen myself, and I know a few other people have seen these sorts of things. I know people have used things similar to that for loading grain, um, for loading um, wood chips and all sorts. I have seen something similar to that being used for loading manure. Um, an actual real-life one. 
So, yeah, it is realistic, actually. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, yeah, I, I, I got from the tone of the comment that was made a while ago uh, that the, they, they, it, it wasn't felt to be realistic. But, honestly, I'm, we're going to have to agree to disagree on that particular point because, from what I've seen, it's incredibly realistic. It, it's very, very much realistic. And um, such things do exist and such things do happen. Always be careful that just because you don't see it out of your back door doesn't mean that it's not happening. Um, I believe uh, the Flat Earth Society operates on that kind of principle. I cannot see the Earth is round from my back door. Therefore, the Earth must be flat because it appears flat from my little vantage point right here. Um... Yes, I have just recently seen a couple of videos from some flat earthers who also claimed the, the, the well, there was a number of claims made. Things such as koalas and um, the platypus are not real animals and uh, other such things like that. It's all designed to get us to believe things that aren't real um, and that the earth is flat and that there's no such thing as space. Because the sun just revolves around. So what's on the outside of the dome? Right, it's just a dome over the top of us. So my question is, what's outside the dome? There must be something there. It, 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 it's like, so well, what is there? If space isn't real and the planets are just dots painted on a dome, where where to next? And no, if, if, you're, if you genuinely believe the Earth is flat and I have seriously offended you with my comments, uh, too bad, I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I normally try to avoid controversy. I normally try to avoid upsetting people and offending. But honestly, if you're offended by me stating that the Earth is not flat, I'm stating the Earth is not flat. I'm stating absolutely 100% the Earth is a globe. It's not exactly spherical, but it is a globe. Um, I'm stating that as fact. And if you find that offensive, then perhaps... This channel is not the one for you. There are corners of the internet that are much safer. Uh, I believe most people wear shiny hats. So uh, you, you may find them, but you will not find um, somewhere safe to hide here from the government conspiracies that will try to have you believe that the earth is not flat. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a flat earther. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm what, what do we call it? Are we a globe earther? Are we a round earther? I, I, I don't really know. I'm sure I've offended somebody. I'm, I'm sure somebody's going to be upset by those comments. I have no doubt about it. I can feel it in my waters. Whether that person is going to be uh, still watching my videos in another few weeks' time, I have no idea. Anyway, I've waffled on about that enough. So we've sold our slurry. We've sold our uh, few loads of political promises, and we're going to bring this one around. Um, Someone in the comments last week, I think it was last week, it might have been a week before, said that there is actually a, a company that empties septic tanks. Uh, not that far from where I live. Um, it's only 50 or 60 miles away from where I live. Um, and they actually have political promises on the side of their tankers that they use for cleaning out people's septic tanks, which I think is just fantastic. I haven't personally seen them, but next time I'm in that area, I will be keeping an eye out. Because that is absolutely brilliant. The fact that there are people driving around with lorries that are designed for cleaning out people's septic tanks. And they have got political promises printed down the side of their machines. That is just awesome. I absolutely love, love, love the thought of that being a thing. Like, I, I really do. I did not think that that was actually a thing. Um, now, we've got our combine over here. I'm going to just jump to the combine like this. It's, it's quicker and easier. It looks like it's all fully repaired. I've got the... Uh, I've, I've got that one. I've got the corn header on the front. It looks like we are good to go with this bad boy. So I'll bring you out round here and... I am just going to double check that this one is fully repaired and he's ready for starting the harvest so that we can get going with this first thing in the morning. We are going to do some stuff with the animals. We do need to, like, do our usual tidying up with the animals. Let's bring you over here a second. 
Go in here. Okay, you're fully repaired. And you... A little bit damaged. Only a little tiny bit. Not very much. And bring you back round over here. I'll go and put you over near the workers' shed over there. The, the workers' hut. The, the workers' fine quality establishment. Their house over here. The one thing that we haven't done in this series is build ourselves a decent house. I was thinking earlier in the series that we would end, we could end up sort of going for building ourselves a decent house, like that manor house right there for half a million. I'm thinking that might actually be our target in the next series, rather than worrying about it on this one. We may have that as our actual achievement goal in the next series. We got 30 minutes left before the end of the day. If you look there, milk is currently at 1,265. I don't know if that price is going to hold out until morning, though. I very much doubt it. I mean, it might, in which case the low, low price for the wool is also going to hold out till morning, which is going to be a bit disappointing. Right, we will drop you down to one times like that, and we will skip forward 11 hours like this. 164,000, we lose 4,200 in loan interest plus another 1,100 in property maintenance. And let's take a look. Wool is on the up and milk is on the down, but milk is still fairly high at the moment. It's higher than it was yesterday. So first thing in the morning, our very first job is to run down to the cattle pen and load up all of the milk and sell it. So we've got a better price despite the fact that um, price of milk has dropped by over a hundred dollars overnight. Um, we are still getting a better price for it this morning than we were yesterday morning. We ended up with something like 937 per thousand litres yesterday morning. Whereas today we're still over 1100. So it's not so bad. It's not so shabby. For the old milk prices. Bring our tanker up round like this. Down this side. The wool price is, like I said, the wool price is still climbing. I've got five full pallets of wool there. Another pallet is in the process of filling up. Let's bring you back into here like that. Get you loaded up. There we go. There's our milk tanker looking absolutely fan dabby doozer. Let me have a look in here. One, one, two, three. I'm going to leave the wool at the moment until the price is maxed out. Slurry and manure is both down now, so we're going to ignore those completely. Uh, this is the... and silage is dropped, but silage again we're going to ignore. So this is the two that we're paying attention to. And we'll keep an eye on the wool, and when the price has maxed out, then we will come back through and we will sell the wool that we've got, which is going to be another boatload of cash, because we got six full pallets over there, or we're fi five full pallets plus a bit more. So we're going we're gonna to make a nice bit of money out of that. We've got 27, almost 28,000 litres of milk right here. At 1,122 per thousand litres, which means that we're going to be pushing over $30,000 for this particular load. Which is very good, actually. It's very nice. It's, it's a tidy sum. Uh, we missed out on an extra 100 per thousand, so an extra roughly 2,700. Uh, but overall still not too bad and there's the last thousand gone in right there 31,267 that gives us $190,000 right there at the moment $190,000 is pretty good so we go straight back to five times speed now because we're not selling anything else this morning um, the, like I said, the wool, we will just keep a close eye on it. So I want to start the harvest as rapidly as possible. But to be honest, I don't think we'll actually get started on that until tomorrow. Because our other task that we have to do each day, now that we've got so many animals, is we have to clean the animals every morning. We don't have any automation for that. We don't have anything turned off for that, anything like that. Um, as people correctly pointed out, on a stock farm, you still, it doesn't matter what's going on, you still have to deal with your animals. So, we have a stock farm. We have to feed the stock first. Now, it's early in the morning, 7am. 
The dew will not have properly lifted off of the crop at the moment. We will still need to wait a little bit. And usually, or at least, say usually, in my part of the world, when I was involved with arable farming some 20 years ago now, admittedly, um, uh, yeah, about 20 years ago, a little bit less, uh, we never got combining until at least nine, between 9 and 10 o'clock. We'd get out there fairly early and we'd get the greasing up of the combines done, but you'd have to wait for the morning dew to lift to burn off the crop. So you wouldn't get going at this time of the morning because the dew would still be sitting on the crop and um, it'd be no good. You'd be, you'd be bringing the stuff in too damp. So we, we didn't do it then. We, we would wait a bit. See, we're down to 440,000 here. We've got 192 cows. Our sheep are on 233, just 17 to go before we're back up to full capacity. We're on 169 pigs. Corn, we will be able to dump a load in. Water and straw are dropping fairly rapidly overall, but that's going to be an easy one to fix. Next job that I need to do is I just want to pull that one forward a bit. Stop that one there. And then I want to go to this one, and I want to start cleaning up these animals right here. So, putting straw in for the pigs, and also for the cattle, we won't worry about that this morning. They've got sufficient food, water, and everything else that they're going to need at the moment. All we need to do right now is just tidy them up. Uh, why is it just tipping it out in a the heap there? Like that. Shouldn't be just tipping it out in a heap. Now it's not. Now it's allowing me to actually put it in for the pigs. Why it was just tipping it in a heap right there. It seems a little bit odd. I guess it's because of, like, I don't know, whether it was just because there was already a heap there. Could do with a bigger bucket, really. There are bigger buckets available, I know, and I could go and get one. Um, but I'm actually happy with this one at the moment. I'm quite happy to just muddle along with this little bucket. There's another bucket full, and we tip that out, and then one, so that was like, there's a good three bucket fulls that I've taken there for the pigs. There's the last bucket full there, so it's th three and a half buckets, well, three, three and a quarter buckets, three and a third. And if we have a look in here, that gives us 153 litres of potatoes, which will last them for an hour or two. That just boosts the overall yield of everything, just a fraction, so it's not a huge amount. What are the sheep like for water? Water is actually pretty good, but I will just let a little bit in. The pigs in particular need a little bit more water because of how rapidly their numbers are growing. Um, so the water is being shared between more and more animals. So I'll come down here next and we will do the grass down here. Let's see if we can work our way through this. There we go. And I'm only going to do it like little bits to a time. It's a bit difficult from this end because of the angle of the ground. That makes it a little bit more tricky to get exactly right, but we can still do it. There we go. See? Actually tidying up fairly well here. Did I not clean it up like first thing in the morning last time? Is that why it's... Like, there doesn't seem to be as much grass here for the sheep as um, there has been previously. And I don't think it's just because we got rid of 25 of them. I think there's a little bit more missing than there is normally. Well, I don't know. I might be wrong. We had about 330 litres of wheat here last time. We got 390. So, well, maybe it's not any different then. Maybe the sheep just don't spill quite as much as the other animals do. That might be it. That that could easily be it, actually. Right, we'll now go round and I will stick the silage in the back of this trailer here just to finish that one up. And that's everything I need to do for the animals at the moment. I don't need to do anything else for the animals. All we've got to do now is start our harvest so that we can get the corn down. That, I really hope, is going to be enough corn for the pigs. I, I really, really hope that's going to be enough corn for the pigs. I don't think that we're going to have enough of the other... We definitely don't have enough wheat and stuff, because we, we already know that. Um, this is 
terrible here. What I'm doing here exactly. Uh, we definitely don't have enough wheat and we definitely don't have enough uh, protein crop. So what I'm hoping is we'll decide which one we need the most of after we've done this harvest and we've sort of got that bit sorted out. And then once we've dealt with that, we can then go and do some planting. So hopefully we're not going to need to plant any more corn. It will depend on the total yield that we've got. It will depend on how much we've got spare in storage because we're going to need to be able to top the pen up to match the full 300 pigs that we get in there once those full 300 pigs are in that pen. Right, let's bring you in over here. Another 900. There is a lot of silage being spilled here every day. There is a lot of silage. I mean, yes, we are stockmen, so we do need to be cleaning up our stock right here and taking care of it like this. And I, I, I do quite like the fact that we have to carefully clean up the animals every day and we have to make sure it's done. But these animals are extremely messy eaters. I may end up doing something slightly different in our next series because... Yes, we are going to be contract based um, and I'm not going to be going for all of the animals that we've got this time, but I am planning to do cattle in our next series. I am planning to have cattle. I quite like the cattle in the game. I, I, I always quite enjoy them. Um, so because I'm planning to have cows in the game, I'm going to want to be doing something with those cows. Right. That's going to stay there. This tractor here. I'm just going to bring you over here a bit so that you're a little bit out of the way like that and then I can jump over to this one 3,800 litres of silage right there it's coming up to 8 o'clock and I still haven't started the harvest I thought I was going to get that started today and we're fast running out of time for today's episode we will actually start though I'm going to bring this one over here I'm going to unload this little bit of silage, and as soon as I have set this one unloading here, not set this one unloading, as soon as I've driven it round and I've set it loading, we're going to jump into that John Deere combine. We're going to go round to the field, and we are going to start our harvest. No, I'm not going to start this one loading. This one needs to be ready to chase that combine round the field. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave it here. I'm going to unhitch that tractor. Because I'm not using this tractor to pull that trailer. Not to start with. That's going to be the case. The case will be this one here will be doing that. I'll get that one on it in a minute. I want this one. Right, let's do it. Let's start this harvest. Let's actually get going with this harvest, shall we? We've been waiting for it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We want to do the corn first so that we can get going with the ploughing in that field because that is going to be a big job to get all that ploughing done. So I'll bring you over here and uh, there's no actual unfolding to do on the combine itself. The only unfolding is on the header on here. So I'll bring you in there like that and I will go control H here a second and I will do that like that i'll just go in here yes i've got all of those that's okay uh there we go right that's that's all good for me i'm, I'm happy with that let's start this one up and see how we get on with it he's going in here he's, he's measuring the field at the moment he's measured the field now we move on into the field and we will start working our way round. What he's going to be like cutting this field, I don't really know. It says that it will turn 100%, but we know that the turns on this are a little bit sort of strange at times. So he's going to come out to there. He's, he's straightening up on that bit and then he's going to back up. And then he'll do a turn. But it's turning by the stone at the top of the hill. It's going to be the strangest part of this one is how well it's going to be able to turn on there. So we're going to follow that one round. Let me... It's the wool price. We're at 1,090. That wool price is what we want to keep an eye on. But there we go. We've actually started our harvest. And yes, it's right at the end of the episode. 
but we are combining and we're going up the hill now I don't actually know I think that combining up the hill is the safest option going down the hill is less safe because you've got all that weight pushing you down so I believe combining up the steeper part of the hill is the safest way to do it you want to combine up the hill although as far as I know with modern combines the way they work it's actually better to combine across the hill because they self-level inside so it's safer than um, you don't want to be going up or down the hill if you can help it what you actually want to do is you want to be going across the hill uh, whenever you can I, I think I don't know anyone that's done a lot of combine work in the last decade or two with you know, on steep ground let me know have I got that right is that correct is the safest choice now to combine across the hill rather than working up and down the hill but I was told that going up the hill is the safest option that's that's what you want to try and do if you can is you want to combine up the hill um, I mean, that, that, that might not be entirely accurate, but uh, I, I believe it is. We'll go and get the tractor in the next episode, I think. For now, we're just going to enjoy this absolutely beautiful view. I know that we started quite early. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. The dew possibly hasn't quite lifted yet, but I think we're all right. Um, I know some days we haven't been able to get going until half past 10, but I'm sure we've started combining before 9 some days. You know, we must have done. Um... So, yeah, we're, 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 do, we're doing fine. We're doing absolutely fine, and we are away with the combine. And that's the most important aspect of it. And now we've run out of time, so we'll have to carry on with this harvest in the next episode. If you enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.